from the historic Loretto Abbey Chapel. With the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents The Daily TV Mass. Welcome to the celebration of the daily TV Mass. I'm Father Ernie DeCiccio. The televising of this Mass is made possible by the contribution from Stephanie and Ernie Montaño from La Habra, California. This Mass is offered for all the living and deceased members of the Orfanos and Montaño families and for the employees, suppliers, and customers of Del Valle Caman and Company a business which soon celebrates 120 years in business. Our thanks to Stephanie and Ernie for making it possible for tens of thousands of the faithful across Canada, the USA, and around the world to share in this celebration. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. My brothers and sisters, on this uh, feast day of St. Catherine of Siena. Uh, let's uh, prepare ourselves to celebrate the Eucharist. First, we give thanks to God for blessing us in so many ways. And as always, we acknowledge our human weakness and ask the Lord for pardon and for peace. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who set St. Catherine of Siena on fire with divine love, in her contemplation of the Lord's passion and her service of your church. Grant through her intercession that your people, participating in the mystery of Christ, may ever exult in the revelation of his glory, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. At Iconium, Paul and Barnabas spoke in such a way that a great number of both Jews and Greeks became believers. But the residents of the city were divided, so that when an attempt was made by both Gentiles and Jews with their rulers to mistreat them and to stone them, the apostles learned of it and fled to Lystra and Derbe, cities of Lycaonia, and to the surrounding country. And there they continued proclaiming the good news. In Lystra, there was a man sitting who could not use his feet and had never walked, for he had been crippled from birth. He listened to Paul as he was speaking, and Paul, looking at him intently and seeing that he had faith to be healed, said in a loud voice, Stand upright on your feet. And the man sprang up and began to walk. When the crowd saw that Paul had done, they shouted in the Lycaonian language, the gods have come down to us in human form. Barnabas they called Zeus, and Paul they called Hermes, because he was the chief speaker. The priest of Zeus, whose temple was just outside the city, brought oxen and garlands to the gates. He and the crowds wanted to offer sacrifice. When the apostles Barnabas and Paul heard of it, they tore their clothes and rushed out into the crowd, shouting, we are mortals, why are you doing this? We are mortals just like you, and we bring you good news that you should turn from these worthless things to the living God who made the heaven and the earth and the sea and all that is in them. In past generations, 
God allowed all the nations to follow their own ways. Yet he has not left himself without a witness in doing good, giving you rains from heaven and fruitful seasons and filling you with food and your hearts with joy. Even with these words, they scarcely restrained the crowds from offering sacrifice to them. The word of the Lord. Not to us, O Lord, but to your name, give the glory. Not to us, O Lord, not to us, but to your name give glory. For the sake of your steadfast love and your faithfulness, why should the nation say, where is their God? Not to us, O Lord, but to your name give the glory. Our God is in the heavens. He does whatever he pleases. Their idols are silver and gold the work of human hands. Not to us, O Lord, but to your name give the glory. Alleluia. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Holy Spirit will teach you all things and remind you of all I have said to you. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory Glory to you, Lord. Before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. During the supper, Jesus said to the disciples, They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me. And those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. Judas, not Iscariot, said to him, Lord, how is it that you will reveal yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus answered him, Those who love me will keep my word, and my Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words. And the word that you have, that you hear is not mine, but is from the Father who sent me. I have said these things to you while I am still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to the Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. I always like it when I get to say Mass on the feast of one of the saints. 
You know, we're blessed as Catholics by having these wonderful examples of our faith, these heroes, if you would. Um, and St. Catherine of Siena is certainly one of them. Just recently, by the way, I went to see a movie called Cabrini about Mother Cabrini, Santa Cabrini, another great saint of our time. Go see if you get a chance. I love to tell people how uh, you pray to her if you're looking for a parking space. You know the prayer? Dear Mother Cabrini, please find a place for my machini. Works every time. But let's talk a little bit about St. Catherine. She lived in the 1300s, long time ago. That's hundreds of years ago. And how amazing that after all these centuries, we still remember her. She's a doctor of the church. Yes, she's patron saint of Italy too, along with St. Francis. And how many of you know her family name? Aha, it's actually Benincasa. I only know that because I had a bunch of Benincasas in my parish, so a shout out to all of them. Enough about St. Catherine. I really wanted to talk about this beautiful first reading. I usually talk about the gospel, eh? That first reading is interesting because here are the apostles working miracles. They had that power given to them by Christ of bringing healing to broken bodies. And they heal this man and these people think that they are gods. They're ready to offer sacrifices to them. And Paul, we read, is scandalized by this. He tears his clothes. What are you doing? We're not gods. We're human beings just like you. And he tries to stop them. He tries to stop them. He could have said, go right ahead. I love the attention. I love being put on a pedestal. I like being special and more important than everybody else, eh? That could be a very normal human reaction. The apostles knew who they were and who they weren't. They were not gods. They were servants of God. And we learn from that example, like we learn from the example of all the saints who understand that their life is all about pointing to Christ. Remember John the Baptist? People were flocking to him. They were ready to make him the Messiah. No, I'm not worthy to untie the tongue of his sandals. He made himself small and he pointed to Christ. And Christ himself, our Lord and Savior, teaches us all about humility because he came down from heaven not to be served, but to serve. And so who do we think we are? Do we like popularity? Do we want power, honor, glory? The temptation is there, and it's easy to give into it. The apostles could have done just that when people were ready to make sacrifices to them, thinking that they were gods. Let's never forget, there's only one God, and we're not him. But hopefully we're all God's servants, and hopefully throughout our life, through our words and our actions, we point people to the true God, as did the first disciples, who led so many people to salvation in Christ. Today's responsorial psalm was so appropriate because it fits with the exact theme that I was talking about. Not to us, O Lord, not to us, but to your name give the glory. The old Latin prayer, non nobis domine, non nobis, sed nomine tuo da gloria. Let's remember that always. We're not called to be gods. We're not here to make ourselves more important or special than anybody else, but like Christ our Savior, and like all the saints, we're called to serve our brothers and sisters and lead them through our way of life, through our words and actions, to an encounter with the risen Lord. And now let's offer our prayers to the Lord our God, who always hears us and answers us in our need. 
for all those in our daily TV Mass Prayer Intentions book. We pray to the Lord. Lord, This Easter season, we offer our community prayer and thanksgiving for the new life that is ours in the risen Christ. May we be strengthened by his healing presence among us so that we might live in peace and glorify him by our life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Let's continue to pray for peace in our troubled world. So many wars go on in so many lands. So for an end to violence, for an end to hatred and division, and that all the peoples of the earth may learn to live in harmony, we pray to the Lord. For all those who are sick or suffering, whether in body, mind, or spirit. I know so many of you would like to be able to attend Mass in person and can't anymore. And we're grateful that we have this opportunity on TV to pray together, celebrate the Eucharist as a community. But for all those who are in hospitals and nursing homes and prisons, confined to their own homes, for all those in need of God's healing and mercy, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, hear our prayers and fill our hearts with your peace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the grace and glory of his name, for our our good and for all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, the saving sacrifice we offer in commemoration of St. Catherine, so that, instructed by her teaching, we may give ever more fervent thanks to you, the one true God. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the saints who consecrated themselves to Christ, for the sake of the kingdom of heaven, it is right to celebrate the wonders of your providence by which you call human nature back to its original holiness and bring it to experience on this earth the gifts you promise in the new world to come. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. You 
are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Francis, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Catherine of Siena and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. And now let's join together in prayer using the words that our Savior, Jesus Christ, has given us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Take away the 
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Please join me now in this act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in this holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things, and I passionately desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my soul so that I may unite myself wholly to you, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. May the heavenly table at which we have been fed, O Lord, confer eternal life upon us, as even in this world it nourished the life of St. Catherine through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass.